Hello and welcome again. In this video, we will talk about an attack on the LGML signature uh, that will recuperate the private key if the signer or the person who is sending the messages reuses the F metal key. Now, this is something that we talked about in general from the last video. So if you haven't watched that video yet, so you want to go back and read the theory and how the uh, private key can be computed if we reuse the F metal key. So, so in that case, if you watch that video, it will be more, uh, it will make this video will make more sense to you. So, okay, so let's go ahead and uh, go into the example. So let's suppose that the public parameters for the LGML signature are, as always, three numbers and the prime number, the generator, and the number B here, which is a modular exponentiation with the private key. Now, because the numbers here are, of course, small, I can actually do a discrete log on this B here. But let's see that that's not necessary. So it's not necessary to do a discrete log here to be able to actually find the private key. And that's the point of, of this example, that you don't need to do uh, discrete logarithms. Okay, so let's assume that uh, the boy, which is the signer, sends uh, the following packages. So he's going to send two messages. Each one of them uh, will be, of course, different, but they will use the same F metal key. So the messages are these two messages. So the message 422 with R1141 and S1 375. This is this signature, this pair of numbers that is here for this message. In a similar way, so we have another message as 501, and then we have the signature uh, 141 and 350. So these are the two messages that are sent through the insecure channel. These are the message, and these are uh, the signatures for each corresponding message. And what we want to do is we want to find the private key. We're not going to use discrete logs here because of the main point here. The, the reason for this is you don't need to do discrete logs if that you use reuse the F metal key. Now, if you notice here in these two messages, R1 is equal to R2. And from what we discussed in the previous video, what that means is that will tell us, it will tell the attacker that the person who is sending the messages is using the same ephemeral key. So since R1 is equal to R2, the ephemeral key uh, was reused. So it was used for both messages that wanted to be sent. So in that case, we have the following equation. This equation that you see here is the one we discussed in the last video. So that's why it's important that you actually go ahead and check that video first before you actually go ahead and do this example. So from the video, we said that the ephemeral key, if they, if they, if they are reusing it, then it's going to be this uh, uh, computation here. So it's the first message minus the second message is times the inverse of S1 minus F S2 modulo P minus 1. So in this particular case, what we have is that M1 is 422 and M2 is 501. As you can see from here, from these two uh, uh, packages that were sent through the insecure channel. And S1 and S2 is out of course these two numbers that are here. Now again, this equation was discussed in the previous video. So that's exactly what I have here. So you go ahead and compute this. Uh, 422 minus 501 is negative 79. And if you do this, of course, you get 25. And that's going to be the inverse. And P minus 1, of course, is... 382 because the prime is 383. All right, so now I have to do here is, now the emphasis on this computation is we don't have to do discrete logs here. Everything that we do here is actually modular multiplication or just finding inverses, which is something that we're gonna do here. So the inverse of 25 modulo 382. And that can be done because the greatest common divisor between 25 and 382 is one. So if you use the extended Euclidean algorithm, you'll be able to find that inverse, that is the inverse of 25. You have this uh, discussed this several times during the class, so I'm just going to mention that, that you can actually do it using the extended Euclidean algorithm. So if you do that, you're going to get uh, uh, 107, that's the inverse. Now, you don't want to have any negative numbers, so what you want to do is you need to do the division of negative 79 by 382 and get the positive remainder, which in this case is 303. And then you do the multiplication. This is just a modular multiplication. And you get modulo 382, which is 333. So that's it. The EFML key is 333. Now, notice that I didn't have to do any 
uh, discrete logs. Everything here is very simple. It's a very simple uh, thing that actually it is very fast, relatively fast, if you actually actually use large numbers. Even with large numbers, this is entirely possible. So, so we had the FML key here. Okay, so let's see. Now we can use the FML key to actually get the private key. Now, if you look at this equation here, this is the an equation that we also discussed in the previous video. We actually, we arrived to this equation in the previous video. And B here is a private key. So this is what we're looking for now. In this case, we know R. R is the common value. Is R1 or R2. They are the same thing because we are using the same ephemeral key. M1 is the uh, first message minus the S1 of the first message times the ephemeral key, which we already know. So this information, R, M1, S1, and the ephemeral key. And of course, P minus 1 is all known to to the attacker in this case. So I'm just gonna go ahead and replace that. So R is 141. The first message is 422. S1 is 375. And the ephemeral key is just the one that we just computed right here, which is 333. And that I have this, right? So I just do a normal multiplication subtraction. I get in here negative one, negative 124,453. That's gonna be all modulo 382. So I take this negative number, I divide it by this, and of course I get a positive remainder, which is 79 in this case. This is all, some, this is all everything can be done uh, easily. So it's not uh, difficult, even if the numbers are large. And I get 141 here on this side. As you can see here, I only have one unknown. Now the good thing about this is, if you look at 141 and 382, they have no common factors. So that means that the GCD between those things is equal to 1. That means if these two have no common factors, it means I can find the inverse of 141 modulo 382. So that's what I said here. Then 141 has a multiplicative inverse modulo 382. So what I'm going to do is because that multiplicative inverse exists, I'm going to multiply on both sides by that multiplicative inverse. So in that case, I'm going to get B equals to 79, 141 inverse, and that's inverse modulo 382. Again, what we do is we find uh, the inverse of this using the extended Euclidean algorithm, and you can do it because the GCD between 141 and 382 is equal to 1. So it turns out that 141 inverse modulo 382 is 233. And then, as you can see here, I just have to multiply 79 times 233 and then take the modulo at 382, and that happens to be 71. So, as you can see here, we got the private key. So, the private key then in this case is 71. So, if you use the ephemeral key twice, then that ruins everything. So, you somebody can get the private key. This is not a matter of being a small numbers. Even if I chose really big numbers, I can still do all of this because if you can see here, all of the operations that I'm doing is multiplication, modular multiplication, and finding modular inverses, which is relatively fast and efficient if you do it with even numbers that are 10, 24 bit length. So you can recuperate the private key, so bad idea. Really bad idea if you use the FML key twice or more than one time, three times, four times, it doesn't matter. You can still recuperate the private key. So they come, I'm gonna do this remark again because I think this is very important that the computation above can be performed efficiently even if the prime that we are using is 1024 bit and even if we choose the divisors of P, P minus one to be uh, all divisors to be large, that doesn't matter because then. The only thing that we are doing is what I just mentioned several times, only modular inversions and modular multiplications are required, nothing else. And modular inversions and modular multiplications are fast, even though you use these big numbers. So the whole point that I wanted you to take out of this example is that you don't need discrete logs to compute the private key if some if the sender is using the ephemeral key twice. Bad idea, really, really bad idea. You don't need the discrete logs. So for the example that we saw uh, before, of course you needed discrete logs uh, for that. So, but when you have large numbers, 
in the script logs, then you, you cannot do it with the techniques we have today. But even uh, with today's techniques, and even if you put a very large, this is all possible if the heavy metal key is used twice. All right, so that's an example of an attack uh, using the, when the sender is not smart enough to send two messages with the same heavy metal key. So in the next video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about another attack that can be done on the Elgamal signature. And that attack is very similar to the existential attack that we do we did in the RSA. So basically, the next video what I'm going to explain is what the attacker can do to fake signatures. Now, the attacker can control basically the message, but he, can, he or she can control uh, the signatures that he sends, and then the signature will be verified. So I will discuss that in the next video. So I will stop the video now and I will see you in the next video.